Hello, this is Steve with Pro Tools PC, and this video is on the playback engine. So let's go ahead and launch a session. And from here, there's two ways to open the playback engine. Uh, you can hold down N right now when Pro Tools is launching, and it'll automatically open it up. Or we can go up here to Setups and the Playback Engine. So here the actual playback engine heading shows which interface you are using and the drop down will show you what interfaces you have available. Uh, here Pro Tools 12 now will let you use the onboard audio of the computer without any other drivers. Uh, performance wise I haven't been too impressed with it so I recommend using the ASIO for all driver if you're going to use it. Um, there is another video on that, so I don't really want to get into it here, as that's another subject. So here at your buffer setting, uh, this is basically saying the buffer size, which is going to dictate your latency on the tracks and the plugins in that case on the tracks uh, that you have in input monitoring or record armed. Uh, the ignore errors setting here uh, will help minimize AAE errors on playback and recording. Um, so typically, like say if you got a 9173 errors or something occasionally popping up when you're trying to record that don't make any sense, uh, this can help minimize that. And instead of throwing up errors, sometimes you'll get clicks and pops. My experience is, is they typically never make it into the recording. If you are recording, they're just more on the playback side. Um, the other thing to take note of here is the minimize additional I.O. latency is that sometimes when setting the ignore errors, it can add latency in certain situations. Typically not very noticeable in my experience, but it does help minimize uh, any other latency. You can read the manual on that and how it drops it to a 128 buffer. Uh, it's an interesting subject. Dynamic plugin processing is when the plugin will actually stop processing, uh, which means it will actually take the load off of your CPU when no audio is on the tracks that the plugins are on. And then when audio pops back on the track, it will kick in and start processing again, and you'll see the load hit your CPU. Your disk playback cache size setting uh, is taking audio, which is basically centered around your playhead and loading it into the RAM to use as such uh, for a prime start, so response time is quicker. Uh, you'll notice uh, there's four gigs less available than what you have in your system. That four gigs is set aside for your system in Pro Tools. And underneath window and system usage, uh, that Pro Tools will take uh, that amount of cache size out of the available RAM that you have in your system. But then the disk cache size above it is showing how much of the actual cache that you are using. Thanks for watching. I hope this might have answered any questions you have. And feel free to contact us if you have any others. Thank you. Thank you.